All right, today we got Miss Elizabeth's 2013 Chevy Sonic in here. She brought it in. It is misfiring and running sluggish and has check engine lights and all around is just not in the best shape. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into this and see if we can't figure out what her problem is and get her back on the road in a good driving car. Got my scanner hooked up here. We ran the codes. We have a turbo under boost code and an engine misfire code. Cylinder one is our problem candidate for the misfire. And there's also a buzzing that you may be able to hear every time you key it up and when you key it off. That sounds and feels like it's coming from the turbo wastegate, which is interesting to me. Um, but we're going to get into that here in a little bit later. First things first, I actually want to start off by doing a compression test across all four cylinders. Uh, because she did say that it was had a pretty bad oil leak. She just got fixed recently and she doesn't know how low she got it on oil. Um, from the sounds of it, I think the engine is going to be fine. I'm a little nervous about that turbo though because uh, turbos need oil. And turbo vehicles with turbos on them uh, react much more poorly to low oil than non-turbo vehicles. And no vehicle likes having low oil. So, uh, yeah, that's a little nervy. We're going to dive in there. Hopefully, we find some pretty simple things and we get this puppy fixed up. So, to start, I'm going to go ahead and turn the key off. Uh, and I'm going to... Dive right in here and get to these spark plugs. We're going to do a compression check to begin, and then we'll start working our way back from there. All right, so step number one, and this will work uh, if you're trying to just change your spark plugs, change your wires, um, or just inspect anything like that. Is It's really simple on these. So 1.4 liter turbo. You're going to grab this little Ecotech plate here. You're just going to pop this puppy off. It should just click right in and out, just like that. Wham, bam, donezo. All right, now that we've set that cover aside, we need to remove the coil pack. So the coil pack's held in with two T30 Torxes. We also appear to have the common broken plug here on the coil packs. Ay, oh, yeah, yeah. These things are hot garbage water. I'll show you a trick to make sure that thing can't wiggle off of there um whenever we put it back together but all right we're gonna grab two t30s we're going to take these bolts out right here and then this whole rail of coil packs will just lift right off of there all right so we got both t30s out we're gonna set them up on the cow there and now you're just gonna slowly grab both ends and wiggle and work its way out voila just like that with the coil pack off you can see your spark plugs down here that spark plug has a boatload of corrosion on it and that is cylinder one that's pretty wild to me. That may be our issue is just some bad plugs and bad coil packs. Um, I still want to run a compression test and get the health of this motor though. So I'm going to start by taking out the first plug. We'll inspect the plug to see what it looks like is going on there. And then we will get our compression tester in. Then we're going to go one at a time down through all of them. So I do want to point out, I'm over here taking out this first one. This was not very tight. Um, and something I do know about these 1.4 liters, and I think the 1.8s are the same way at this time frame at GM, you actually need to torque your spark plugs, which sounds crazy, but they have copper crush rings on them that you need to crush uh, to get a, create a good seal. So this thing being not tight, it may have actually just been leaking compression throughout the side, but uh, I guess we're about to find out when we take a look at it. Hey. All right. Looky here. So we got some rust. She's old for sure. But you had a lot of grimy like corrosion on the tip here. I wiped some of it off of my finger already. But this is like a dusty powder. And then if you look down here, look at the tip of this coil pack boot, which is out. The spark plug rides in like that. All around, it doesn't look like it's in the best shape. Uh, it's probably due for a change for sure. But let's get the compression tester in here. All right, so before you do a compression test, what you want to do is pull the fuse box cover. So this thing has like two little squeeze tabs right here. So you'll squeeze those and lift it up and just wiggle it out of there. So now we're going to look on here. We're looking for the fuel pump fuse and we're going to remove that. So I'm not seeing the fuel pump fuse in here. There's a FSCM fuse, which I'm pretty sure is like fuel system control module. But we're going to be extra safe here when we do this and we're just gonna pull the injector ignition coil fuse which is fuse number 26 so you'll look on your little chart right here we'll lay this out to where everything lines up and fuse number 26 
is this 15 amp right down here. So these come with this nice little fuse puller. You just stick this down in here, like so. Get it around your fuse, and then grab the sides and pull it right out of there. Ha ha! So there's our 15 amp. All right, if you've never done a compression test, I'm gonna show you on this first cylinder, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just knock it out. Uh, you can rent a compression tester from any auto parts store. So you don't even have to buy one. You can also order one. I'll have a link on Amazon if you don't have a store close to you or something. But uh, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna write down how many cylinders you have, and you're gonna do each cylinder individually, and then we'll compare the numbers at the end. So you leave the spark plugs in every cylinder you're not testing. So we're over here. I think this is cylinder one, this may be four. I'll look up the diagram whenever I'm done. But uh, yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this hose. It has the adapter on the end. You screw it in until it's nice and snug and tight. Let me put you down over here. And then once you're at that point, you'll plug your compression gauge in just like this. And now we're gonna go hit the key. And because this car auto cranks, um, we're just gonna hit the key let it crank out and then see what our reading is and we will record it um and then we will go down each one of them and then we'll compare the numbers at the end also going to change my diagram since i'm not 100 percent sure on the cylinder numbering yet so we're just going to go with four dots in a line and then i'll write the values under each one knowing that this is the driver side There we go. So that way there's no confusion, no matter what. There it is. That one is 240 pounds. So now going forward, all we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed off our tester by pressing this button here. And now we will take it off, unscrew it, take this spark plug out, put it over here, and move our tester over to this cylinder. And just go down the line. We need all four numbers. Oh my god. It is so windy. The door just broke and came flying back. It was held with a bungee cord. That is insane. The compression test is done and the numbers are absolutely perfect. They were identical across all four, which is actually rare. That means it's in very good shape. I wanted to point out this is the spark plug out of cylinder one, which is the furthest one to the passenger side, which is where the belt system is. But uh, this spark plug has a good deal of oil on it. It's a little burnt up. All the spark plugs look like they're in pretty bad shape. And it also has even extra grimies on the top side where the coil pack goes in. And another thing I noticed is looking into cylinder two, look how like dark and kind of burnt that head is. Like it had some oil leaking in there at some point, I imagine. And we're pretty wet over here. But all in all, we should be good to go. I actually am gonna think, right out of the gate, I'm suspecting these spark plugs need to be changed regardless. They are not in the best shape. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this spark plug back in and just hand tighten it. And then we are going to test the coil pack to make sure the coil pack is at least able to spark. And then from that point, we will get some new spark plugs and a new coil pack if we need to, but we will address that in just a second. I'm gonna show you the old school trick on how you test a coil pack. There is a method of ohming out each individual coil on the pack itself and comparing the resistance across them. But what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in and we're going to shove a screwdriver in there and just make sure it sparks. So we know cylinder one is our problem. That's the only one we need to check. So I will show you how to do that here in just a second. If you've ever done this before, you're going to want to be very careful. Make sure you have a rubber handle and you're not touching anything metal or it will shock the dickens out of you. Ask me how I know. But what you're going to do is you're going to take this screwdriver, any screwdriver, you're gonna stick it in and you're gonna make contact with the coil and then we're gonna lay it in such a way I will show you that we can get our screwdriver down by something metal like that we need it pretty close and then we're gonna look for it to jump spark from our screwdriver down to like this say this bracket I'll try and hold my camera and get this where I need to get it all right, can you turn the key over? You're going to need to plug the fuse back in too for this process. Just bump it in and it will start trying to start. There it goes. We got started. All right. Voila. So we know the coil pack's working, so we're going to start with spark plugs and see if that handles our misfire problem. All right, here we are. Moment of truth. Uh, 
I disconnected the battery because I did read something on the line that said that buzzing noise at the front some people were having success disconnecting their battery and reconnecting it to end it all right i'm trying to turn this light off it's killing me there we go um so i'm gonna tighten that back down but we have our new spark plugs are in coil pack is back in um i was gonna try and do the zip try uh blah, blah, blah. i was gonna try and do the zip tie trick to hold the plug on but there is almost no clearance between the rail of the coil pack and where that plug engages so i can't fit a zip tie in there so for now we're gonna leave it just like that i know it's engaged i know it's plugged in so let's do our checking on the misfires to see if the spark plugs fix that problem and we will address the coil pack plug later holy cow y'all i overlooked something before and i want to point it out real quick so when i was checking these coil packs you remember i did the screwdriver check earlier in the video i was like yep that's all good well, look here. I got out, got the new spark plugs in it. It actually ran good until I got it up to temperature. Then every time I went, came down to idle, it started misfiring. If you see that little mark right there, this coil pack is busted. And okay. when it's in the head, hey, Gary, give me one second. When it's in the head, it actually shorts out and grounds up there instead of sparking through the spark plug. So it does indeed need a coil pack. But when it's out of the car with a screwdriver in it, it can't arc out right there because it was just hovering over here in this air. So how wild is that? Well, looky there. No more misfires. Whoop, whoop. So that's super exciting. It is running the way she is intended to run. So now the question we have to decide is, is there a boost control problem or was that related to the misfire so obviously a turbo uses the exhaust off of compression uh, to spool so if you don't have any compression to push it i feel like that will throw off uh, the boost control solenoid because it's expecting a certain amount of exhaust to spin that turbine and that turbine uh, rotation is going to dip every time that cylinder comes up and unfortunately i uh forgot to wrap up this video but with the coil pack and the spark plugs replaced uh the sonic ran absolutely perfectly um it also fixed the turbo boost problem it was indeed from the exhaust output without uh ignition in cylinder one causing the misfire so that misfire just was not spoiling the turbo the way it was expecting uh but she hasn't had a problem since then so uh yeah all is good if this video helped you out hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you want to see more